ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie talk podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz, and on today's episode, we'll be talking about Sisu. Did I get that right? Sisu? Close enough. Sisu? All right. Cool. Um, but of course, before we get to any of that, I'm joined today by uh, Golden, Gold Nugget Nathaniel. Nathaniel Gingrich. What up, everyone? I'm Gold Nugget Nathaniel. Um think nugget not a not a used enough word who's the nuggets denver right we were just talking about them we were just talking about them is that the best mascot for denver no it's the worst i think it's i hate the i hate i don't know about the worst the broncos isn't that cool in my opinion but i mean the logo we're talking about the logo oh sure rockies is baseball we're talking about logo. I don't mind the the Nuggets logo. I just think the Nuggets as a mascot is dumb. Well, the Avalanche is is the is the Colorado team, but I don't know. Do they play yeah, in Denver? Avalanche is cool. Do they? I assume they play in Denver. They're, they're the, the Col- yeah. I I would assume they play in Denver. They're the Colorado Avalanche. I don't think there's another biggest city for them to play in, so I assume they're in Denver. I don't know. Anyways, I'm Gold Nugget Anyways. Nathaniel. Hello. Hello. Also joining us today is is oh Siri says good evening. I don't Hi, Siri. That. Hey Siri. Um, we also have hang him high tie Tyler Dallas. How's it going? Oh hey dude. Too bad man. Hanging him high. Um. Yeah, I mean there was some of that oh, in the movie. Was, I uh, personally do not. Or Adam, when you brought up Siri. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hey Siri, and then like my MacBook just talked to me. It was like. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's uh, Apple phones and 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 iPods are just going off right now. Oh, I forgot I can't. I, yeah, I forgot I can't do that. That's not not mine. Get that trash out of here. Oh, sorry. Hey, okay, Google. Google. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just Deactivated. dropping listeners by the second here. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. You had that ass right. Xbox, turn off. See if yeah, anyone's... Jesus, we're gonna get them all. <laughs> See if anyone's Alexa. got that one on there. <laughs> I had to round it out. <laughs> Somebody who has like Alexa and Apple and uh, an Xbox are just freaking out. Right competing now. ecosystems. Some grandma. Yep. Uh, and rounding out the squadron, of course, is Big Bomb Blake. Blake Holder. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hi, yeah, right, Blake. Not much. Not much. Uh, I do not have a large bomb. Okay. No. Just want to put that on record. I don't know where I don't know where this thing's being recorded. I don't know who's listening to it, but I, in fact, do not have any bombs or bombing material. You already got cleared for pre-check, right? Oh, TSA pre-check? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Then you're chilling. Who cares? I don't think they can take that back, right? I think that's just like a they gave it to you. <laughs> you know, I would, I would, I would hope they can take it back. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like if anyone, they're just the. Uh... What is that? The PTA? No. TSA. The parent, TSA. Te- the P- parent teacher association. Yeah, they are <laughs> they are a problem. I'll tell you. They're very strict. Yeah. Oh, the uh, TSA. If anyone's gonna revoke something, it'll be them. Yeah, true. Uh, I need to invest in a pre check now that I'm I've been flying a bit I've been I've, oh, f- I've been flying a decent amount this past purchase. year. Yeah. It's not that expensive, from what I understand, and I think it's only like a hundred bucks or something. But totally yeah. worth the hundred dollars if you've. Yeah, I would say if you fly more than even like two times a year, you, you it, it's beyond worth it, bro. Yeah, just I like mean, I will. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, just like our other sponsor, AMC A List. That's right. We're sponsored by <laughs> uh, TSA <laughs> PreCheck and AMC A List this week. So and thank you, the U.S. Army. Because uh, their advertising is going way up. Army strong, folks. Army, Army. strong. Yeah. Uh, jo- Jonathan Majors had a had a little bit of a snafu, so they asked us to oh. start advertising for him. I thought you were going to say we're sponsored by Jonathan Majors. I was going to be like, all right, we might want to wrap this one up. <laughs> I don't know if that's the sponsor we're looking for right now. 
No, but I did see that apparently more people are coming out with uh, accusations of assault from him. So gosh, that doesn't, sick. Doesn't doesn't look good, does it? Does not look has good. Has Disney dropped no him yet? Marvel's do we know? Do. Huh? Has has Marvel dropped them yet? Has dropped him not yet? Is, is that official? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, I know his talent agency and his PR agency. Oh. Or two of the agencies he was working with both dropped him. His talent and I think God. PR agency. Um, so uh, you know, Marvel. I I think they'd be they can't wait too long because even if they wait to like a trial, that kind of looks bad. Um, so I don't know. I, again, I would assume they're, they're I'm assuming they're they're surveying other options as we speak. But then again, Ezra um, Miller, like, what, how to handle this? Ezra Miller apparently out there running. Oh God, the Flash, R- running amok. Yeah, and also like, running. The flash. I was gonna say running amok. You're, <laughs> you're, the chances of you being you know assaulted by Ezra Miller are low, but never zero. You know, it's <laughs> it's one of those things. It's, it's, you're never it's truly like that, that safe at night. <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, uh, I was about to say something and I totally forgot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a. Uh, this is a. You might t- tell by the the episode title, um, but there's all four of us here. Yet this is a uh, a bit of sizzle episode. Bit um, of oh, sizzle. Even though it's a it's a regular review, you might be asking yourself why. Um. And I'll tell you, it's because I guess this movie isn't like wide, wide release. I assumed it was. Um, but basically, the Regal by me decided not to show it. Uh, they, um, I have no screenings. I could not find a screening anywhere near me. We can only uh, assume they hate the finish. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe our state legislator like banned it or something. I don't know. Maybe uh, they, they are. Do, they do some weird shit. Maybe they don't like Kimi Raikkonen. Really lost. He in this movie? It could be pro. It could be pro Nazi. They they let's hope they, if they were pro Nazi, they, they would they would make sure it was it was shown. That's what I'm saying. I would I, I would like to have any legislators in America not be pro Nazi, but um, you know, I think you'd be surprised, if Daniel. Fingers crossed. I think you'd be <laughs> surprised. Thanks. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, I couldn't find a screening, so um, I found that out today because I was going to go see it today, and I just hadn't looked for a showtime because I wasn't going to go watch it. Uh, I didn't have time. So I was like, oh, I'll have time today after my final class of my undergrad. Um, and applause. Yeah, round of applause for the boys. Uh, Hold on. Where's, where's my button? Uh, Give me a sec. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, very exciting stuff, yes. Uh, I'll get to that. Uh, you can circle back to that in a second. But yeah, couldn't find a screening. Uh, and then all three of these gentlemen had already seen it or were like had their tickets in, to see it. I think someone said someone saw it today that uh, had their tickets or whatever. Anyway, um, so it was kind of too late to abort that because then I, all four of us would have had to watch a different movie if we wanted to switch and, you know, all this other stuff. So we're doing this as a bit of sizzle. It'll be I'll be sitting out the spoiler segment of the review. These three fine lads can uh, fill you in on their thoughts like a normal review. And then um, if I get around to seeing Sisu, which um, I don't know, maybe based off your guys' non-spoiler thoughts, I can uh, make a determination if I want to or not. But if I do get around to it, we can maybe give it a uh, full ranking on the entry list. So, But there you have it. That's, mm-hmm. uh, that's why this is a bit of sizzle. It's going to function pretty much the same as a regular episode. But since it's not going on the entry list right away, it is not a... Uh, certified uh, brb so it's sad but true i mean if um if anyone i blame regal i do too i really do actually because they have cc on their website meaning some regals are showing it but not mine Mm. for whatever reason which that happened once before what movie i can't remember oh it was blue by you blue by you oh yeah what did we slot in instead of that Forgot what we slotted it in instead. It was like reminiscence but... or something like that. Oh man, it might yeah. have been. It was around the same time know. frame, fellas. Hell of a call there, Blake. You might be right. Well, I didn't you see it? Though. Didn't you see Blue Bayou? Did one of us see it I at didn't. that point? I thought Tyler did, but I could be. Mistaken. I really wanted to in theaters, but then I think it's streaming somewhere. I just can't remember where. Feels like one I of those ones that's just yeah, like on Prime or something. Mm. Or Tubi. Tubi. Shout out to be yeah. bit of sizzle may uh, see some Tubi here later, but you know, who ooh. knows? That's tantalizing. Um, so yeah, 
bit of sizzle up. That's that. Just thought I'd let you guys know. But yeah, I am. I'm kind of done with college. Kinda. What? <laughs> hey. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, it's like that golf uh, from Wii Sports. Nice shot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had my last, potentially last class ever today, which was uh, very strange. Mm. Kind of walked out and I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Um, hello help i think uh, um yeah that was i think you should get another year of college just for free for your choice just because of you you know you lost one due to the right, covid right. shit you know just like covid eligibility for college athletes that just get to I, say, yeah hey, I'm yeah gonna stay another year you white shirt what was that was that your freshman year it was my freshman year yeah red oh, shirt man yeah, is that, that what sucks. it's called when you get injured and you yep. get an extra year, you redshirt. Red shirt. It is. Red yeah. shirt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't even think you have to be injured. I think it's people just get red shirt. Oh yeah, that's true. To get red shirt. But yeah. Uh, yeah, they uh, they basically do it to save you uh, a year of yeah. eligibility. So if you're a freshman, but you're on like the varsity team or whatever, they can red red shirt you, and they basically save you a year for playing. Because I think that's you right. can only play a certain amount of years in college. You can only play four. Yeah. Four yeah. per yeah. sport. Second, yeah. like if you take a snap as a football player, that counts as one year of eligibility. Yeah. Yep. Per yeah. sport, though, is what I understand it, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't I believe think so. I think it's so. Because I, 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 so? I think there was a guy in like my, in my, I want to say, like he was still, he had played four years as foot in football, and then he was still there as a post grad and played an extra two years on the baseball team because he was just a freak. Oh, wow. But, I feel uh, like that sounds right. Because uh, yeah, isn't that the thing? Like LeBron could go back and still have like baseball eligibility or something like that if he wanted to. But I thought so. Yeah, I thought that was the case though because LeBron didn't go to college and play sports. Oh, that's a great point. So like it's like yeah. uh, like <laughs> that's, a, that's played, a, um, an excellent point. In the NBA for a while. I know he went back to school to play golf in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I believe he's currently a student athlete, but he came to the NBA immediately out of high school. Mm. So he never went to college. So I think technically he could go back to the NCAA and play anything. I just don't think he could play basketball in college. Right. Well, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Listeners, write in. Let us know. Yeah. If you went professional in a sport and decided to go back to college and play a different sport, right? Yeah, know. like there's there shouldn't be any reason why you couldn't do another sport, right? Like and play varsity there. That that if that's a rule with the NCAA, then yeah, fuck that. I mean, you should be able to do at least four years in separate sports. I would think. I agree for sure. You would think. Maybe that'll be my thing. I'll just keep making varsity squads at different schools and different. <laughs> In different sports. You should go for it, Nathaniel. I'll, I'll support you the whole way. That means I can still keep my Olympic eligibility as well, too, guys. So, you know, this, True. this isn't a bad plan. Be like that it's one guy fun. from Mexico that always makes the Winter Olympic downhill ski team because there's nobody else from Mexico that does it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's a sweet gig. It is a sweet gig, yeah. What is isn't there a movie about a Jamaican bobsled team? Yeah, one it's or two. Cool runnings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that one time at like my friend's house during a sleepover. I was like, why are we watching this? Like, it's why amazing. Is it so good? Why is it so good? That is like, yeah, I feel like that was the uh the rainy day school uh movie that they used to show at my school during every uh mm. like when we had our PE canceled for rainy days or like the Yeah. The, is that a thing here? Do you guys have that? Like your your lunch the rainy recess? Days? Yeah, well, we'd have inside recess. Yeah, okay. Obviously, man, yeah. talk about a fucking memory, fellas. You're going way back in the day <laughs> with recess. Oh, yeah. I mean, recess. I mean, your whole day was built recess around was the recess. Best, man. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Anyways, we're I'm 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 drifting on long here. Should we should we talk what we're watching before Yeah, let's go what we're watching. Yeah. You know, I I uh, yeah. I got a heck of a list. I'll be honest, boys. I uh, I got to a lot this week, and we are recording late too. I guess that that should be stated as well. Um, but I got to um, well, first and foremost on the list, our friend, friend of the pod, friend of the show, uh, Brittany Gunn. 
Gundy. Gundy. Uh, she had not seen the original Star Wars trilogy. So this past weekend, they re-released. Shout out to her. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Uh, much like, like in you the guys same watch together in the same boat. Well, I've only seen one now. Well, th- this is the thing: is they were re-releasing uh, Return of the Jedi into theaters this past weekend, and Correct. so we did a marathon of A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back on Saturday, and then went to see Return of the Jedi in theaters on Sunday. So this would have been a good weekend for you to also join us on that one, Blake. But uh, obviously, been very busy um, <laughs> overall. And you didn't know what was happening, so that's on you, if anything. But um, yeah. I got to the original trilogy, long story short. That's always a fun time. Not something I was necessarily anticipating getting back to um, anytime soon. But, uh, you know, good overall. Um, Tubi comes in and features again this week uh, with a movie that is called Antichrist. Has anyone oh heard of this movie? <laughs> no, that's I. Uh, I haven't. So you might have to. So it is a. You have to give me an idea. Maybe yes. I've heard some rumblings about it. But. It is a. It is a Lars von Trier film. Uh, it stars our boy, friend of the show, friend of the pod, uh, William Defoe. Um, and it also stars Charlotte Gainsbourg, and that is about it. It is about. Uh, it is a two-person movie. Um. But it's about a couple that are mourning the death of their child, and they uh, they go to their remote cabin to try and kind of work through it. The husband is a therapist. Uh, the wife is obviously going through some grief, and they're trying to get through it. And things don't go well, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> it is very violent. It is very transgressive. It is very... Um, there, there's nudity you don't normally get in a, in a mainstream Hollywood film, and which this isn't. So there you go. But um, yeah, it, it definitely goes full uh, full frontal, we'll say, and uh, it's intense. Oh, uh, and um, yeah, I I catch your drift. I don't know if I would say I'm a recommend on it overall, but if you're into the uh, like you know new French extremity, your old uh, high <laughs> tensions year old anything like that um this one may be one that speaks to you overall um or if you're just a william defoe fan you know and you just gotta oh is it willem it is willem yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta complete the uh complete the filmography maybe this is one to knock off your list there um what's the symbology yeah yeah exactly um up to date on ted lasso Still enjoying that series. Yeah, um, I just actually I caught up. I'm fully caught up. Fully caught up. What are your thoughts? Fully like, caught up. isn't it weird that no dude, one's really talking about it? Dude, this might be one of the best. This might be the best season so far. Like, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Glad like this has gone beyond just me and Waz, where we're just constantly each week like, God, this is a great show. This is awesome. Like, this is fantastic. Okay. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we got some shooters out there for Ted Lasso uh yeah i don't i don't know no one it's not like like no one's talking about it but like relatively to like how people normally talk about the show no one's talking about it. right yeah it just it seems very weird it's like they don't realize that it is the final season or something you know Mm -hmm. i i I don't know i don't know it actually could be it because i don't think people really expect three seasons out of many shows nowadays sure sure, sure. it's kind of a more recent thing that shows are actually ending when they're supposed to but uh novel concept i know weird yeah. I got two more on my list uh besides Sisu. So in Anime Land, uh I've really just kind of, you know, some ideas are so so fresh, so new, so um so obvious that mm. they just don't appear to us before we should realize it. And uh that that occurred to me this week when I was like, I wonder if there's like a boxing anime that I've never just, you know, delved into or or bothered to think about and sure enough there is a boxing anime called hajime no ipo or or in uh english fighting spirit um Uh and it's from 2000 it's on crunchyroll and it is the perfect marriage of like 
anime style lessons bullshit all that good stuff but also yeah. being told by someone who clearly knows a lot about striking and really? and, and boxing and all that kind of stuff and and animated by people that have are either coming off real life references or have watched a lot of it too so it is yeah. just really like scratching all of the itches for me um right. and i'm very much enjoying it so uh big old recommend there Last thing I got to was John Mulaney's new special on Netflix, Baby J. Um, I was that. I haven't watched it yet. It's good. Yeah, it's definitely uh, Mulaney esque. Yeah. I would say, uh, if you're good. used to that, and um, he very much addresses his life, uh, which you know, fair enough. So, how that... much of the special? I've seen a clip from it. Sorry, and I, and it looks like it's. How much of his special does he talk about that? Because I've seen a clip from it, and it seems like it's like he kind of opens with it to get it out of the way. Does he stay kind of talking about oh, that? Oh yeah, for a while? It's, it is. It is featured heavily throughout. I would say gotcha. overall, That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good. It's good. Worth uh, cool. w- definitely worth watching. So other yeah, than that, I will check it out. I got to see Sue yesterday, and I will kick it on over to Blake. Cool. Um. I didn't get to too much, but I should be getting to some more stuff gearing up here with the work kind of finally coming down to the regular terms. But one thing I did get to is uh, I spoke, what was it, a week or two weeks ago, I spoke about House of the Devil and Ty West, and I was doing a deep dive on some of his uh, Ooh, discography. Yes. Um, I watched The Innkeepers. Okay. What did you think? Not that big of a fan, man. No? Not that big of a fan. Fair no. enough. It was, Fair this enough. one was... um. So for I, I guess for listeners, so Innkeepers is Ty West. I think it's his second film. I want to say House of the Devil is actually his first theatrical it's film. Very did, early in like his 08 career, oh eight or something like that, oh yeah. six. Um, Innkeepers is twenty eleven, and uh, it's it's not as it's not as time period e quote unquote as his definitely other three, no four films. It's contemporary but, for the time. Yeah, yeah, but I still think it takes place maybe in the eighties or something like that, kind of from my understanding. But um, just kind of the and, and the story on that one is uh, there's two people. They kind of they're working at this hotel. The hotel's going to go out of business. They think that there's a ghost at the hotel, and they're trying to record it and kind of get it on camera before the the hotel goes out of business. Um, I don't know, Nathaniel. This one, this one lost me. It's really campy. Oh, for sure. This one definitely really campy. And I, think, I didn't really expect it to be that campy going into it. Sure. It already kind of threw me for a loop. And um, it was just really slow burn. And I'm in for a slow burn, but this one was really slow burn. We're like, you're not getting anything till I mean, probably a hour, 10, hour, 15 in. I think you get one jump scare, maybe about the 45 minute mark in a bedroom. Then after that, it's all just kind of tension and world building. But, um, yeah, my least favorite so far. I would say that my least favorite so far. I don't disagree with that. I think I have a soft spot for innkeepers because for a while it was definitely kind of like my go-to starter horror film for okay. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sure. if they're just like, I want to watch a horror movie or like I want to watch a ghost story or something like that, and like it's a it's a good one to start with kind of thing. Um, and I do think it's still the Ty West strengths are still there. You know, I still think he's got a pretty good gift for, for story overall and just kind of a, a good sense for atmosphere. But uh, yeah, all your criticisms totally understand, but um, you know, I, I, I want you to watch the sacrament as well too. I'm def I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on that. Is that Ty West? That is Ty West. Yeah. That's the found footage one. That is like the, it's, basically a a faux jonestown documentary okay which i mean i can add adam might like that as well too really basically you like body horror no no it's a mockumentary but it's about like it but it's again like jonestown i don't know what jonestown is that's the uh drink the kool-aid where the the cult went down to guyana and all drank the kool-aid and like 900 people committed suicide not familiar but i uh oh man you're about to do some yeah get some learning that's where the phrase don't don't drink the kool-aid comes from gotcha okay i see it out of here have you ever played um adam may know it have you ever played the outlast games adam 
Oh, I, I have, yeah. I want to say the second Outlast is actually based on the the story Nathaniel's talking about. Well, I guess not story. It's actually real life. Yeah, gotcha. I think I only played the first on one. Okay. But um, I'm familiar with the games. Yeah. Like the concept of them, but gotcha. Gotcha. Nonetheless, so, okay. you got to. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add that one to a watch list. But, got um, to the innkeepers. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't, think I, I don't think I'll watch it again. If I kind of wanted to go for that level of camp and kind of slow burn, I think I'm, I'm, think I'm leaning a few other directions. That's fair. Before, before I go back to, to Ty West on that one. So, so far right now, he's still shooting at a pretty good clip for me. Um, where he's only got about one miss, and I, I think I'm rocking with him about four movies so far. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Still got to get to Pearl, and I'm um, waiting for, I think Maxine is later this year. So, definitely need to get to Pearl before Maxine comes out. Yeah, I can recommend and Pearl. And I want to say that's really the only movie I've gotten to. Um, I've gotten back into Snowfall, which is that Hulu show. Uh, Hulu Maybe we talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, so got back into that from maybe about a, well, two or three months ago from removed. They just finished season six in real time, which was the end of the, the end of the series. Um, so I figured once they did that, I was like, all right, let me go back and kind of get get back in this. So I'm on the second season so far, but that's really good now. We're kind of seeing how um, the CIA kind of their role and kind of the the drug game and drug trafficking as well. So yeah, that that one's pretty good. I'm curious how it'll rank up. Um, there are some people who say that I'm not going to say a lot of people say that, but there are some people who do kind of compare it to the wire and think it's up there in that terms of TV show ranking and writing and character development. Um, mm-hmm. there's also some other people who are kind of like, ah, I mean, it's good. I don't know if I'd go that far, but yeah, we'll see. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. But yeah, that one's, um, that one's interesting so far. And, uh, that's, that's it for me. Um, Adam. Yeah, I only got to two things, really. Um, one, as I mentioned before, is Ted Lasso. And I'm very annoyed that people are not talking about it because, um, like I said, it might be the best season yet. Like, that, it, The writing in that show is just it's phenomenal. I, I can't believe that show makes me feel... just feels like many emotions as it does, you know, uh, both happy, sad, and in between, like... There, its ability to just you connect with every single character, and there are so many to connect to. The fact that they're able to do all of it is so impressive. And there is one episode specifically, the Amsterdam episode, Nathaniel, um, mm. or anyone who's seen the show, where I was just like, "How the hell do they do this?" We're like, just all these characters win and have such good wins and such good payoff, and you know, there's there's like four groups of people or four, you know, four or five groups of characters um, that they cut between. And all of them, I feel very connected to. And like, as they're cutting between them, I'm feeling very like, oh, like that's sweet, that's nice, like I, that kind of thing. And just I don't know, I I've never had a show that like can consistently make me feel so good, but then also like, in some instances, like it's not always happy and like no, so, so bad at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the, this the is writing what... is just incredible. Yeah, this is what I will say with Ted Lasso is that it is an example of a show that consistently and um, another word for consistently, <laughs> well, <laughs> time and time again has proven that it sets up the start of its questions at the beginning of each season and then it answers them slowly over time it does yep. not waste time before it gets to that it takes its time before it gets to these kind of cathartic answers and because of that and because it's so well plotted out um and so well thought out i believe you can get these kind of natural peaks and valleys to the season where you have like it's not a coincidence that the Amsterdam episode is episode six and that this is going to be a 12 episode season like we have right. already risen and fallen during this season as well too with the whole Zava arc and now episode six we start the beginning of the transition to the end of the season as well too so um right yeah I mean it's 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 great it's just a smartly written show overall yeah, it's genius. 
Yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. Everyone should watch that show. I Which, legit think everyone it's it's for everyone. Like I don't think there's I, I don't I can see a single person disliking that show. Which also brings me back to another point that in a world of all these different streaming services, maybe someone needs to say uh, Apple TV Plus might be uh, one of those ones out there that's a sneaky. How much is that? Uh, five, five six bucks a month? month. Yeah, it's not that much. Oh, um, that's not. Yeah, I don't have Apple TV Plus, but that's five bucks. Yeah, that's not bad. I can get behind that. I I I was gonna bring that up at some point, um, because I I do like they're 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 sneakily. They're sneakily getting in a lot of good shows because yeah. I hear people talking about Severance all the time now. I've Severance heard about, like, is very, five very good. Talk about it the last two years. Yeah, Severance is uh, very, very weeks. good. I watched all of that. Uh, Shrinking is also great as well too. Ted Lasso, obviously. Um, Waz yeah. watched all of Mythic Quest, and then the movies okay. that I've seen. There's been a couple of decent documentaries, and some of the other ones people have liked as well too. So I don't know. Apple TV Plus kind of taking the Less is more slow approach. Obviously, they can kind of do that because they have more money than God and can kind of afford <laughs> to just spend, you know, thirty million on a show that may take three seasons to find an audience. But yeah, I, I don't know. Keep an eye out, folks. Apple TV Plus making moves. Do they it's almost have, like um, Apple knows how to make good products? Yeah, weird, right? Fair enough. Uh, real quick on Apple TV Plus, like, what's their movie selection like, though? What's the movie catalog like? Is it so? It, what are we looking? S tier, A tier. They're terrible? all they're all Apple TV Plus movies. Like, like the the like base thing I can think of is that Tom Hanks movie that we were supposed to do for the podcast, but didn't Greyhound. Greyhound. Oh, uh, okay. So like, there's like a couple of them on there that I've seen that like a couple documentaries that I've seen that have been pr pretty good, but like. The actual Apple TV Plus movies themselves, mixed bag. But the the other thing is, they also will do a monthly, um, like selection of movies. So like, I think two months ago when Knock at the Cabin came out, they did all of the M Night Shyamalan movies that you can get through the Apple TV app that are all in 4K and like Dolby Atmos and stuff. So that is kind of cool that yeah. they have that rolling as well too. But I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but for five bucks a month, I think it's kind of it it it, it pays for itself. It's worth it's it's worth its its money. Not bad. Worth its salt. Sure. Yeah, especially in comparison to like fucking HBO Max, which is still pissing me off with its raising their prices, adding ads, and yeah. giving it in worse quality. Yeah, yeah, I can't say I am uh, down with that one. That makes me want to join a pirate ship, if you know what I mean. I don't. Tubi? Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Ted Lasso, and then I'm also caught up, uh, I think I'm caught up, at least, on uh, Succession. Oh, I am not watching Succession since uh, since episode three. I was kind of like... Oh, really? Yeah, since then I was kind of like, I don't care what happens next. Yes, but like I kind of want. I'd, yeah, I figured I'd finish it out. You know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will. I'm just, yeah, I'm behind right now. It's, it's good. It's good. It's, it's actually kind of like. I know. I just, I'm miss. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for a fuck off, and uh, I know it's not coming. Anymore, oh right, you know, right. Yeah, there. You do. I. You know what? It's funny you say that because I do kind of miss Logan. There is like a presence missing mm -hmm. from that show. Um, oh, I guess spoilers. I don't know. Should I bleep that out? You can if you want to. You're at one hour and four minutes flat. Uh, yeah, one hundred four oh two. Yeah, I'll bleep it out. Fuck. I just hate creating more work for myself. Anyway, um, what did I say? One hundred four oh two. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, but you're but correct. Yes, uh, there's there's a. Uh, presence missing in the show and sure. uh and yeah, that is it. yeah that's that's i think what i'm reacting to is i just know that that's not going to be there and i just haven't there's been other things that have been interesting more, me more but um i've talked a lot to someone else adam finish up let's get to the movie review yeah 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 um but yeah it's it's still been good and nothing i'd recommend finishing it out um, i will so yeah for far, sure it's, it's been good um i will say they've kind of played up other characters more now 
Um, I've heard uh, Tom Tom Wamsgams coming in as MVP on this season from an acting perspective. Oh, he's killing it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, he is killing it. Um, honestly, they all are. They're all they're Fair. all kind of they're all great. Peaking. Yeah. yeah, they're they're all great. The great actors for sure. But um, yeah, I've been liking it. It's it, it's it's solid. I can't wait to see how that ends. But it's they're kind of just like having a bunch of bunch of scenes where it's like hey imagine game of thrones but like all the houses were just in a room together yeah talking <laughs> and like it's just like yeah it's just like oh oh well, this is happening um but yeah i i've been liking it it's uh it's good i'm excited for it to finish out i'm it's at a good pace right now where i think they have what three episodes left maybe i think this was episode six or seven um and i think they'll uh they'll have a good pacing and uh hopefully maybe not a peaceful but a um a uh what's this word looking for satisfying resolution mm, mm, mm. yeah yeah uh but that's basically all i got to because i had finals this week or final projects too essentially and um was spending a lot of time doing that and now i'm very tired fair enough uh tyler uh i think you gotta finish this off here yeah 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 mine's uh pretty quick uh i went to nashville over the weekend so uh oh, yeah, yeah that uh how's that me... it was good man it was really good uh, it was for uh, Rob's birthday, and uh, shout out to oh. Rob, even though he doesn't listen to the podcast. And uh, shout out, <clears throat> hi yeah. Rob. Rob, Ryan, don't get mad. Um, I know that we give him shout outs, even though he doesn't listen, and you listen. So shout out Ryan while we're just you know making up for shit. Pull him on. Um, okay. <laughs> and then uh, shout out all of our listeners yeah yeah definitely um so yeah props to um to rob's girlfriend her name's Kristen. she uh kind of put the whole thing together and so it was me justin and ryan that drove down there um and it's it was very cool so it's dope yeah we got to go to a nashville soccer game so uh that was that pretty fun instagram yeah it was cool so good time we were in the supporter section it was loud people were getting hammed so good stuff cool yeah How's that? I've never been to an MLS soccer game. I haven't either. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was my first time. So anytime you get to go to a professional sporting event, just fucking go. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree. Even if you're not a fan, odds are you're going to have fun. That's for sure. Yeah. That's a, a good rule of so. thumb for life. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I saw like these guys, like they literally had in the supporter section, they have people that are on like another platform above the crowd. And they're literally just hype men. Good. They have like <laughs> different signs to do like different chants. And there's like four of them all across, like down the supporter section. And they're just fucking screaming shit. Like there's this one guy, looked like he was just fucking cracked out of his mind. But he was just like, get the fuck up. <laughs> and he's just like top of his lungs, just going crazy. I'm like, this dude's insane. That's the energy I need. <clears throat> so... Yeah, the the back of his jersey literally said, "Get the fuck up." <laughs> so, well, I mean, I appreciate a man who knows what he is and what he brings yeah. to the table. You know, yeah, absolutely. So, we did stop at the cabin on the way down there, so um, we do have access to like TV and stuff like that. So, I was talking about how I watched The Fifth Element, and uh, Justin and Ryan wanted to watch it again. So, I was like, "Whatever, I don't care." Classic. <laughs> so, uh, I got to that again, but, uh, of course they both fell asleep and, uh, I was the only one that ended up finishing it. So here's what um, I was thinking about with fifth element. Attack of the clones. I was a lot to fifth element with the Coruscant scenes in yeah. versus the, the taxi and, and the driving and everything. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like it, it, it kind of feels like they definitely transposed from one <laughs> to the other. Shot for shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little so, bit. I mean, yeah. the cars kind of look the same too. Uh, that's so, yeah, right. I mean, not, there's definitely I'm some influences saying. there for sure. Not saying, just saying. Anyway, yep. Um, Carolee and I just threw some on. It was on Disney Plus. It's called Secret of the Elephants. It's basically like a documentary series, and they uh, just explain why elephants are smart as fuck and uh, have to constantly evolve, and how there's um a bunch of different like sub species of elephants um because they have to adapt to different environments to live in so uh that's been pretty cool elephants are dope um animals are dope so yeah and then uh i got my tubi pick hey -o. <laughs> um we it's have, a, like a segment called tubi pick of the week and it's just yeah, right. <laughs> you should no, watch off tubi for free <laughs> um 
I uh, I was just kind of cruising around on there looking for something to just kind of watch in the background. And uh, Transformers uh, Beast Wars is on there, which oh, is a uh, wow animated show from like the <laughs> early 90s, mid 90s. And uh, it's it's terrible animation. Animated. I was going to say animated in quotation marks. <laughs> that is probably one of the first CG animated shows. Like yeah. if Toy Story was the first CG animated movie, this has got to be one of the first shows, and it is got to be up there. It's rough. Yeah, it's not good. It's <laughs> um sometimes when I first started watching, I was like, this is borderline unwatchable. But then um it really just hit me in the feels, and I just remember like literally waking up and like eating a bowl of cereal and just hanging out with Justin and watching that show and sure um. It's just it's it's fun to just go back. So I'm actually continuing on with it. I think there's like three or four seasons on Tubi. Oh, so man. I'm gonna keep going with it until uh, I decide that I don't want to. But other than that, that's uh, really all I watched. And uh, we got races this weekend, so I'm hyped. I can't wait. That's true. And, uh, yeah. Well, there was races. You guys, there's oh, races yeah, there was last weekend. Week. Week. So. I I did not watch Baku. I did. Yeah, I I think I texted the group. I was like, I woke <laughs> up to check what time the race started, and it was over. And yeah, it made me sad. Yeah, yeah. It was um, it was pretty uneventful for the most part. Um, Checo won, uh, and then it was uh Leclerc, and then Verstappen. Um, so yeah, Red Bull is just completely running away with the season. So yeah, but is Alonso still? Is he is he on like podium for the season? Is he, is he top? I'll three have to take a look at like what his numbers are personally. He's got to be three. I don't know who third. else would be. Yeah, that's sick. Um, that's that's my but, guy. Yeah. That's that's what I'm watching for this whole season, man. It's just yeah. Alonso scoring points. If, hey, and if it's those cool. rumors are true about Taylor Swift, he could win a championship. <laughs> Alonso scoring points. Yeah. He's just uh, he's I I think he's got. I think he's doing a really good job this season. I think it's just, um, unfortunately for everybody else who's not a Red Bull fan, it's going to come down to just check on Max fighting for the championship. Oh, 100%. But, like, you know, if he's there to play spoiler a little bit or just be the old guy with a fast car, like, I'm always yeah. in for that. 100%. Oh, and then I did, I have been watching uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Other than that, oh. that's all I got. All right. Uh, well, I believe that means we can head on in to that fan favorite main review segment nathaniel if the listener hears you or maybe they've just forgotten can you give them a rundown of how the review segment works well i'm here to tell you folks for the fan favorite review segment here it is split into two sections there's the non-spoiler section and then there's the spoiler section which will actually be pretty important this week because one of our members has not seen this movie um but Correct. stay away <laughs> Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, folks. In the non-spoiler section, we'll go over the movie itself, um, its IMDb page, who wrote it, who directed it, who starred in it, all that good stuff. Um, we'll go around the squadron, in this case, the triptych, and uh, decide uh, <laughs> if we would recommend this movie. It has to be a yes or no. There is no nuance on the internet, obviously. And uh, then on, it'll be spoiler time. I'll play the spoiler sound. Who knows what it'll be this week? But um, we'll go uh, any big spoilers, plot twists, any of our deeper thoughts on the movie itself. But even if you don't want to hear those uh, and have it spoiled for you, do come back and listen where we would rank the movie up on our entropy list, which is our big list of all the movies we've watched on this podcast ranked. Except we won't rank it quite yet this week, I guess. So we're calling an audible for a little bit. Um, so once Adam has seen it, it will go up on the entropy list. But um, right. until then, wait in suspense, folks. That being said, Adam, tell me about Sisu. I would love to. Um, I can only tell you so much, as much as there is on the IMDb page. This is a uh, new film, rated R, with a runtime of one hour and 31 minutes and an IMDb rating of 7.3 out of 10. My bad. Not too bad. Uh, and a great looking poster written. too i have to say the poster yeah on imdb yeah, at least cool. yeah it's it's, a, it's real yeah, good yeah, it's, it's real good uh directed and written by jalmari helender is it helmari i don't know who knows who knows i i apologize the these names maybe yeah maybe yalmari Yal yalmari yeah i don't know regardless uh he wrote and directed it um and it features uh, Yorma Tamila 
uh, Axel Henny, Jack Doolin, uh, and Mimosa Willamo. How far do I have to keep going? I, don't I think know. that's that's good enough. Yeah, I see SS Soldier pretty quickly on that list, so I'm assuming it runs out pretty dry. Yeah, there um, maybe one other more or less person that's kind of a character, but other than that, that's really it. Cool. Um, let's see. Excuse me as I yawn. Um, the IMDb summary reads as follows. When an ex-soldier who discovers gold in the Lapland wilderness tries to take the loot into the city, Nazi soldiers led by a brutal SS officer battle him. Cool. That is what it says on the 10. That is what it says. Um, I don't know. Was that a good IMDb summary? Haven't seen it. Uh, Yes. Yeah. I mean, cool. So, yeah, it says if you look at the poster, it says Sisu, and then it says noun, white knuckled grit and determination. And that's how the film also starts as well, too, is defining Sisu for you. And then it is split up into six chapters. And, um, yeah, up to chapter three ish, I guess, or so is maybe where we would go for non spoilers. Um, mm -hmm. but. Boys, what are your thoughts overall? I think Blake, you probably saw this first. Uh, I saw this Wednesday. What's today? Today is Thursday. Yeah, I saw this Wednesday. Oh, then Father Tyler. Night. Tyler saw it first. I also saw this yesterday. Then I saw it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I saw it at twelve thirty in the afternoon. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so, I saw it at like seven fifteen last night, and I saw it around five thirty. So there we go. Tyler, tell us your thoughts uh, overall. Um, I think it was pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed myself. I think uh, uh, timing is fucking great. Uh, you know, I think they definitely uh cover all their bases within the the time frame that they gave us. Um, I always uh dig the chapter layouts it's always very fun when you get to kind of see the uh the acts kind of break themselves down beforehand mm. um just gives you a sense of kind of reading a book while you're watching a movie which i always enjoy acting is great i do i'm always a really big fan of uh when you get to a movie that has very minimal dialogue uh and they can still tell a story through the actions um, of, you know, kind of what's going on and just through uh, uh, the, I guess, facial acting that you're getting from uh, some of the actors. But uh, overall, really, really well shot. Great acting. Uh, love this story. Uh, it's definitely a recommend for me. Yeah, um, I'll kind of double down with Tyler. So I went into this actually really blind i didn't even know this had to do with like nazis so i think you guys brought it up on the podcast last week um <laughs> so i didn't see a trailer or anything for this um and honestly pleasantly surprised you know it's um i think a lot of people as tyler brought up the chapters will probably begin to compare it to like a quentin tarantino type film mm -hmm. um even like with the like the blood and the gore i guess you probably could take that route as well sure um i don't think it's necessarily that cohesive though and 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 that and that neat and tidy but um yeah nonetheless like walking into this and not knowing what i signed up for and got that i was like oh this is actually pretty cool and it's super campy too um and those are all things that just just completely blindsided me you know what i mean so um i i was sold once there's once you kind of get the first you get the first real scene, quote unquote, of what this movie is going to be when um, the gentleman um, and I, I don't even does he even have a name? No, no. Uh, well, he does that he's referred to as similar to like Baba Yaga and John Wick, mm. but it's not okay. like an acknowledged it's a, a Tommy. Name. Is that the main character? Uh, Sure. But I think it's, I think it's Koshai or something. Kof, Koshai okay, is yeah, something yeah, similar that to that. Sounds right. Yeah. I think um, when they get his. Dog, dog tags. tags they might know his he real name say yeah his name like the commander says oh it's so and so but he's like they they said we should get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah 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 it's similar they're it's very also but they're like it's it's baba yaga basically or right, 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 right you know right. it's the man um yeah so once you kind of get the first scene of what you of what this movie's gonna end up being uh he ends up meeting three uh nazi soldiers 
right? Some things go down. And like from there, I was kind of like, oh, so this is what I'm going to be watching for the next like hour and a half. You know what I mean? And I was cool with that. So I think as uh, as Nathaniel says, like if um, if you woke up in the theater and this was playing, would I waste 96 minutes or whatever it is for the runtime on this? Absolutely. It's a quick movie. It's a popcorn movie. It's it's campy. It's got it's got gore. It's got blood. It's got a pretty good um, even like supporting cast with like mm. the the women who are in the supporting roles. Those are actually pretty good too, as well as the the Nazi general. Um, he did pretty good in in his role. So yeah, overall, honestly, I I, I really don't have too many complaints. It's um, it's a pleasant movie, pleasant surprise. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll round out the uh, kind of group's thoughts here overall. I um, similar to Blake, I didn't actually see a trailer for this before I was uh, sent in to see it, but I did know the overall premise of man versus Nazis, and I knew it was relatively somehow associated with John Wick, um, which brings me to the point of when it started out with just a guy digging for some gold and coming across some gold, I was like. Oh well, this is unexpected. This is kind of cool, um, but then yeah, it ends up with a story that totally makes sense into like why it would go the way it does, and why the characters would react the way they do. You totally buy into it, and it and it makes sense upon you know further inspection, quote unquote. Um, I thought this. It, uh, this, I thought this was a good looking movie overall uh, <laughs> but um, I actually really did think the cinematography in this was pretty great I thought the environment itself was um, unforgiving I didn't know Finland was this kind of so bare bones and kind of um, wind windy overall it kind of reminded me of like a Montana or a Wyoming or something like that um kind of style uh i thought the acting performances were pretty good to blake's point i actually didn't realize until maybe 10 15 minutes from the end of the movie that we really hadn't heard the main character speak or anything like that for (laughs) the the majority of the film itself um but that just goes to show you how well this movie does at putting you in the moment um you know visually and and emotionally with the characters and uh yeah i think overall i think i'd be a recommend i feel like this is a movie a little bit out of time i feel like this is a movie um that we used to get a lot more of that was just the action movie that was kind of like a a take on something from the genre with a couple uh extra you know new ideas or thoughts kind of in there I think the uncharitable way to look at it would be like this is a movie with 45 minutes worth of ideas stretched out to, you know, an hour and a half. But to Blake's point, it's quick enough and it's and it's brisk enough that, you know, you you follow along. And I think there's some can't be more sort of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? stylized elements to this and especially in terms of kind of like the main character and his resilience and uh that kind of thing overall that uh makes it fun as well too so um i think i'd be a recommend with the idea that it's an action movie and you kind of know what you're in for don't go looking for you know a movie that's gonna change your opinion about the world or 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 anything like that but if you're in for some Good action and a couple of inventive, inventive kills. It's uh, you know, worth an hour and a half of your time. Sure. For sure. Is it a recommend? You said yes? Everyone's yeah, sorry. That was a probably 10 minute rant to just say, yeah, it's a recommend. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm now I'm curious for myself. I've got to know. Is it a recommend? Like, do, do I go watch this? So we can I, up I think you would like it, question. Adam. I do. I think you would, I think you would enjoy it. I think it's, um, it looks like it's there. right up my alley. That's why I was very sure. excited to see it. And I was the one who suggested we review it. And then ironically, I'm the one who, I would even say, uh, <laughs> I say Papa Schwartz could give it a, give it a, give it a watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the main. I mean, I'm, I'm back in less than two weeks, so maybe we'll hop on over to the AMC. There you go. The main guy, Jorma, uh, or the main actor, he's got a weird Ewan McGregor face. 
Like occasionally I'll just kind of look at him and think, <laughs> oh, that's Ewan McGregor, and then it it won't be him. Tyler, back See, me up who here. He reminded me of um, <laughs> is the guy from uh, Stranger Things and the new uh, Hellboy. Oh, uh, David Harbour. Har- okay. Harbaugh? David Harbour. Harbour. Harbour, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's who you remind me of. It's not wrong. It's like a thinner, a thinner version of him. So he's from another movie, which is from the same director that our boy uh, Ryan Hollinger, friend of the show, friend of the pod, on uh, on YouTube, uh, did a a video about called Rare Exports that I think was like a a Santa uh, or like or maybe even like a Krampus kind of ripoff kind of thing. But uh, apparently that's pretty good as well too. So no. Uh, maybe check it out. But anyways, sorry. Should we? Do we say recommend? Not recommend? Should we go into spoilers? Yeah, I think we got recommends all yeah. around. Uh, yeah, this, good. this is where we're gonna lose Adam. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Uh, go ahead. Send me a text. I'll go. To, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. Uh, and deafen. So, uh, just let me know when you guys are good. I'll come on back. Let me know if there's any timestamps I need to mark down. Alrighty, boys, I'm going to play the trombone sound. When you hear the trombone sound, we'll be in spoilers, all right? Uh, if you didn't hear it, that was it right there. So, I was going to uh, say, yeah, yeah, I think you're the only one that can't hear it. So, so. Uh, <laughs> shit goes down, I would say. Shit does go down. Yeah, so... I mean, I had no idea this was going to be that type of like camp action fest film. Sure. This it's cool. I'm in. It's basically John Wick. Um, I don't think it's as tight knit as that and like the world building's just not quite there. No, nah, for sure. Because it's technically built around like something that's already exists. Does that make sense? With kind of like a Nazi war and <laughs> no, things of yeah. that nature. Yeah, it's but, it is um, it is limited to the fact that it does have to somewhat apply to the real world physics and that kind of right. thing, right? Yeah. Right, but I mean, yeah, they can't have bulletproof suits and <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. But for what it's worth, man, I I was kind of like, okay, like I'm kind of in because at first you don't really know the guy's backstory when he fucking slaughters like the three Nazis, like the first one just with the knife through the head. Oh I yeah, I was kind of like, all right, I think I'm in. Like you know, <laughs> sure. what I mean? that was the first kill. Um, and then finally they do like kind of the the character building where you realize who the guy is, and yeah, it was. It's campy as fuck, though. A lot of suspension of disbelief. Oh, like, man. Well, obviously, to you the, have to do that in John Wick, but, like, this shit is, like... To the point where I deep. was just, like, oh, <laughs> so, like, this dude is just a legend. Like, he... he like, no, yeah, you, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You almost have to look at it like he truly can't be killed. Like, he is just the Finnish, like, motherfucker. And, like, he, sure. it, you can't kill him. You know, you gotta blow him up to, to, to not have him just come back at you kind of thing. Which, yeah, this is like if Michael Myers and him met. It's like a oh yeah, it's it's a knockdown <laughs> drag out. That's a yeah. great point, Ty. Because as I was watching to myself, I was like, yeah, this is like it's almost like horror movie esque. Oh yeah, like, for the guy sure. Just doesn't die. Yeah, He's like for Michael sure. Myers. That's kind of what I was thinking yeah. to myself. Yeah, and I, I do like that we get just enough. You know, like he like he like stabs his leg into the into that bolt or whatever so like you could say oh well oh the maybe, piece of iron coming out yeah maybe he's got enough air or something like that he's supporting sure, himself yeah. just enough but then that that plane at the end where you're just like oh okay so he is just an embodiment <laughs> I thought of Finland. he was gonna like tie himself <laughs> off and no, then yeah. like dangle until he was on the ground sure. before the plane, and then put himself, you know, like I thought that's a little bit more believable. Could have been anything as far as like, but <laughs> straight but yeah, into the plane crash. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just fucking takes it. <laughs> yeah, that and then somehow uh, swims up through. Yeah, I mean, the, the plane just disappears, <laughs> and that's when I was yeah. truly just like, oh, okay, he is just an embodiment of Finland. He doesn't actually <laughs> exist. Yeah, yeah, he is the country. Yeah, so. one thing. Um, I will give him credit for because obviously once you kind of realize that like the guy just can't die, like then you start playing the game with yourself of like, all right, how is he going to make it out of this scene? Right? Sure, sure. And I never guessed it correctly. So even like when they end up trying to when they end up lynching him, um, sure. I was like, how the fuck is this guy going to get out of this? Sure enough, he jabs his fucking leg into a pole, holds some of his weight up, falls asleep from there. Um, Which the one where he jumps into the creek? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Oh, I just gotta say, like in my viewing. 
the audience was great. Like, uh, and if you were going to go on that as like a form of effectiveness, like the, all of the gore or the like painful parts in this, like everyone in the audience was like, Ooh, like you could hear it and everything, yeah, you yeah. know, which is just, I think always, a you know, a marker of quality in some ways as well too. But continuing what you were going to say, I think I'm on the same page of the, what sticks out for this movie is there's three or four kills that I'm like, well, that's pretty inventive. Like, I'm I'm on board. That's something yes. I haven't seen. Uh, continue what you're saying with, like, the particular, I think you're going to talk about the breathing thing. Yes. So, yeah, that was probably the coolest thing I've seen today. Like, that was, um, that's up there in the John Wick tier of, like, wow, that's some fucking awesome action cinema. Yeah, like, yeah, like uh, I haven't seen that before. So, th- yeah. congratulations and thank you. For sure. I don't know if it'll sure. work. If it's, I mean, it's makes no feasible. sense. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. But like, you're you're taking in blood at the same time. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Who knows like, what you're fucking doing? Yeah. Yeah, and and it's crazy because as you're watching it, right, you're like, okay, he goes in there. Like now, you're like, okay, I think he is kind of immortal. I don't know if he can die, but like, can the guy fucking? I don't know if he can defy physics yet. Can the guy hold his breath for for an hour? Like, sure, we don't sure. know. So you're yeah. trying to figure out how it's gonna work. Sure enough, he's just slitting people's throats under the water, then is inhaling the air just from their throat, sucking the air. I'm yeah. like, that's fucking sick, vampire I style. Love the uh, the uh, the gold pan, the sure. Captain America shield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like when they're just letting him fly at him, and they're just bouncing off, and then he gets clipped in the leg a little bit. Well, that's where um, I was like, like, that's. Go ahead. That's where I was like, oh, is this like one of those Finnish legends? Like, you know, like sure. this was the guy and he's Mr. Finland or something like that, you know? And like, this <laughs> is, is it part that, of... or is it just completely, <laughs> it's just complete like movie narrative? Oh, I think or, it like, could be... is this like actually like a legend, quote unquote, like a, a, a myth, a mythical guy? Right. I, I think it could be either or. And that's kind of the, the, yeah. the you know, the, the benefit to it. I don't know. The, the beauty of it in some ways. Like, it could be either or, you know? But I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, yeah, this is based off of our one crazy general who, you know, lost a hand and what, an eye and a <laughs> leg, but he kept, you know, fucking people up. Like, I, oh. Sergeant Four Leaf Tayback. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> I was I was waiting for all of the, the cauterization to happen. You know, that, that you can't do like. I thought he was like, going to do more cauterizing too with like a hot knife or something. But yeah. like he ended up making like fucking staples for himself. And which like was fucking, crazy. Yeah. Which I thought was fucking just gruesome. I'm like, that's fucking dope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His, his whole side there was just a mess by the end. Yeah. It looked like his intestines were just coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. So, and then, yeah. Like he, I mean, that dude takes a fucking beating and like doesn't pass out like once unless it's intentional, like with the hanging. Which. Brings me to my next point of the ladies. So I get sure. it, but also like, is that where we're going with this? Like, like really? Yeah, like, I feel like he could have rescued them, and then like maybe he could have enlisted them to just kind of like blow away all those guys. But even then, it still would have been just cool if he like did it himself. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I'm with you there. And that that's the thing that I did like was the one girl being like, no, we we know who this is. Like, he's yeah. a motherfucker. Like, yep. he's, a, he's a problem, you know? Um, but, yeah, I thought that was the one bit that felt a little undercooked overall. And sure. it's similarly to, like, the fact where he's, like, he's just going to the next town. It's like, nah, bro, like, you're supposed to be, like, a, a vet right like you should know you know what's coming up right like yeah. you, you know really where you're kind of walking into and all that and the final thing being like i don't know if i'm like if i'm the guy that finds all that gold i'm not letting anything go man like the he's just kind of like dropping bits left and right <laughs> i'm just like yeah we're just leaving like <laughs> like, like 10 grand just fall down the drain there man like, that's like, like the, that's like one of the awesome parts for me is like this movie starts out like so emotionally driven and then like you get all this action in between and then you find out like my man's is just trying to get to the bank my man's just trying to make a fucking deposit <laughs> that was so funny <laughs> yeah like, that was <laughs> good like, right, that cool. it was was it he's like yeah it's easier to carry or whatever like yeah it weighs yeah, a lot less, less. yeah yeah <laughs> which did he say that in english or was that in was that in I'm pretty Finnish? sure that was English. Okay. I don't think there was any subtitles. Well, 
wasn't there was wasn't there subtitles but it was just they had access maybe there was one i don't yeah. know maybe briefly but yeah that was the I, one that uh, was yeah. the one thing that uh, i i will say felt a little undercooked where like even the like second in command was like oh you know like well the ladies over there i would find something fun to do or whatever like we don't really need that like and yeah. like or even like the dead dead wife is motivation like he he can just be a, a guy that finished the last war and doesn't want to fight anymore like yeah you yeah know. he's just pissed off and trying to get gold like yeah. he doesn't like that's all the motivation i need i don't exactly. i don't necessarily need the the dead family exactly. exactly and then yeah especially like the part with like the girls you don't have to like marvel shoot it and have them coming out of the fog they were in a truck. Just have them fucking drive up in the truck if you're going to keep sure, them in the scene. Sure, sure, Like, yeah. <laughs> where'd the fucking truck go? Why would you leave it? <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah, some of that, yeah, more effect over, uh, I don't even know, realism, but whatever. Yeah. But, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think, for me, the big thing was it did feel a little bit stretched, a little bit kind of like sure okay we're going to the next scene just because that's the next scene rather than like this is the next part of the story we needed to tell but um overall like blake said i think early on he's like you know it's it's an hour and a half it's it's worth you know time and has some pretty unique uh kills which would uh keep me yeah keep me coming back the only thing I don't always agree with, and it happens in like all movies that use this kind of effect, it's not just this movie, but the meat shield, like bullets mm. go through people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially bullets. Let alone like, off a turret. Off a turret. Well, yeah, right. Well, so, like, yeah. especially bullets like back then, like those things were fucking maiming people, dude. Those were fucking ripping you apart. Yep. They weren't as precise as they are now. Like they were just there for just fucking massacring so yeah those that's the only thing i don't overly care about i get it it's cool but it's not it's not it's just not i don't disagree with you on that point at all but um you know it is what it is oh and then the 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 dog with the dynamite on him is like bait that's like a to that's that's totally a nazi thing to do so I, uh, I thought that was pretty yeah pretty interesting that they put that in there so i was like all right that's cool man I that dog that. That was, i was, was i was worried i was so worried a couple times <laughs> i'm not yeah. gonna lie to and you good, and good point nathaniel because at, at the end of the day like the dog <laughs> does survive right and knowing this movie they definitely could have took that route of like having that dog's fucking head blown off on screen oh after the horse you know what i mean i was they like didn't do it yeah 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 agreed agreed i was i was worried for said dog i thought we were going oh i thought it was over with bro bro i thought we were going when it was when it it was just screaming off screen i thought we were going full butterfly effect i was i was waiting for it to come on screen just on fire and i was just <laughs> yeah. terrified i yeah. was like yeah that's the most fucked up thing i've seen in a while but then they just gave <laughs> it the the grenade and i was like could be worse <laughs> yeah, right. but yeah uh are we ready to to bring adam back in on this one boys yeah yeah, yeah, yeah overall yeah. i i enjoy this movie i'll definitely yeah i thought it was, it a I thought it was decent point. i thought it was kind of a throwback to some to a style of movie we haven't seen for a while that just got a like good old actioner you know one and a half hour Facts. uh boys but um you know could be better could be worse but always a good option yeah it was um Pleasant surprise for any listeners though. Like I would, and I guess that doesn't matter now because this is obviously spoilers. Well, I guess we're out of spoilers. No, Adam's back in the headset. You're good, Adam. All right, I, I am good. Um, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I unmuted I, I, and I hear. Well, I guess we're in spoilers yeah. still. Because I was, <laughs> I was trying like, to figure uh, how to how to how to work this thought through. But I would just recommend like anybody and we're out of spoilers, go into this film with like nothing spoiled. Like you want to go into this film as blind as possible. I would agree. True. And I yeah. think you and I think you'll like it much more. Where the the more you know about it, you'll probably kind of um like oversaturate yourself. But yeah, if you can just go in this how me and Nathaniel and Tyler went in like, okay, I wonder what the fuck this is about. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And last thing I'll say, great looking film. Like really good cinematography yeah. and color Beautiful. color shading overall like yeah, good good looking movie overall. But um, yeah, we're not ranking up on our entropy list. But uh, should yeah. Adam uh, see it sometime soon, we will rank it up on 
the entropy list. So uh, keep a keep He's that in your mind. Um, well, no, give your give your hypothetical lists or rankings. Ooh, um, cut above the normal the right me. now. Let me let me pull up an entropy list really quick. Where's That's what you asked, right, Adam? Or my true? Yeah, your your okay. your ranking. Yeah. Where would you put it if this was a regular review? Um. Yeah, what? Where we got? We got the boys. I refuse. I'm pulling up the letterbox list right now. Um. Not deep diving too much into it off the top of my head. I think I'm pushing. I'm pushing probably 50, 53, 54, 55 area. Wow, that is way higher than I was expecting. Yeah. Probably be a little bit lower just because I got like Blade and Predator in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Prey, like hanging along like the the action kind of line. Prey was so prey was definitely where be... I was looking. Prey, prey. Yeah, that's yeah. not bad either. Where's, I'd where's probably prey? be somewhere in that sixty five to seventy four range. Okay, seventy four is prey. So yeah, that's yeah. probably yeah. And blade 65 is blade. Blade to prey. Yep, I'm with you there. Ty. Okay, yeah, yeah. You guys may have uh, you you may have talked to me. I I. Went top down, so I didn't get to see For what sure. we had Blade. See, I just saw Wakanda Forever, and I was like, I'm definitely going above that shit. And <laughs> so, yeah, seeing Blade on here and Predator, yeah, I think I'm, I think I may t- tailor it down to probably a. I think I might be with Ty. What'd you say about what'd you say? Six, 68? Anywhere you said? from 69? 65 to 74. If I yeah. really had to think about it, I don't want to give like an exact number, but it'd For be sure. somewhere in that 10. 10 film range. I agree. Yep. I'm, I'm ballparking with you. I'm with you there as well, too, actually. So we got a ballpark, folks. And it's, um, sure does. It's the old ballpark here in, uh, old do you does it? Yep. Give your, give your, I want, I want you guys to give your actual rankings. I don't have an actual yeah, one. Yeah. No, now, we're not okay? talking about that, bro. I don't that, have this bro. guy. I don't it's have this guy. That would I, <laughs> That see, way, when I is, see it, see, I just I'm say not, my number. I don't, no, I don't yeah. want to influence. Nope, you. I agree. I agree. Right. All right. Yeah. All Facts. right. All right. Facts. You know a general you a range. range. Yep. Yeah, yeah. This is a budget builder scenario. You have a general range, but we go off that. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, with that being said, I guess that's it for our review segment. Um, our next review segment, which will hopefully, very hopefully, be a uh, full episode where I have seen the movie. Um, speaking of which, that movie will be none other than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Oh my god. Hey, Marvel's I'm, back, I'm baby. Pretty excited hey. for this. Yeah. This yeah. Is, Have we this heard anything one... about this, fellas, though? Like, I've no heard it's me. incredible. I heard it might be the best Guardians right, movie. Yeah, the, incredible, I, or are we saying it's just one of the better Marvel movies we've seen? I I've heard from like, two of course two two critics uh, that this might be some people's favorite Guardians film. Oh, that's a powerful statement because those are actually so, good films. Yeah, that's, I that's try to stay away from like reviews and stuff of that, like as much as possible. I've only seen Valid. like one thing that literally just said that people are saying this is this is up there with like the the like Avengers like ask tier. Yeah, yeah. Is this James still? Yes, it is. So this it will is. be yes, this, okay. is this will be Gun finishing out his trilogy. From everything I have heard, everyone says it's weird. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, sticky. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, it's good and heartfelt, and it's not for mm-hmm. kids. So, that's um all you know checks in my book. Go ahead, James Gunn, get down with your bad self, and uh, I'm ready. But and this is something I brought up with with Waz the other day. If this if the majority of the audience goes, hey, this is dog shit. Is this the one where Marvel goes like, "Hey, we might be in trouble a little bit"? Do they start to second guess? Is this the the 
Or is this the one where they're like, hey, if this is everyone, if it makes a billion, you know, we're still we're still the kings, baby. This would be a mega break, I think, because um, Guardians is. I think I so, mean, too. I think that it's, like if, it's, if, if, it's if one of their higher IPs now. Well, in, if not that, Marvel. like we've seen now, like you had your Thor that was eh, you had your Black Panther that uh -huh. was eh, you had your Ant-Man that was definitely eh. Like Guardians is kind of that last realm you really haven't like, you know, played in in a while. This is the right. cosmic area. If you don't score a win here, like, oof, you might be uh, you might be playing with some fire here a little bit, Marvel. So right, I'm interested. Right. I'm very interested to see how this goes. I think this could have a uh, a uh, more bigger impact than maybe we're all anticipating. So. That being yeah, said, I think it'll be interesting. I trust James Gunn. Do the damn thing. I do trust James Gunn. Yeah, I do trust James Gunn. But uh, yeah, check out Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I, let's, I'm going to ask this question really quick. When do we stop reviewing every Marvel movie that comes up? I know Blake's going to say tomorrow. I can vote immediately after this. <laughs> <laughs> but but, I, but I actually, I guess I'm not too against seeing this one. Uh, now, the one that I realize is James Gunn. Who's obviously done good work, and then yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a fuck with Groot, man. I got the baby Groot. I'm I do, Groot. I I do feel like in some ways, like if we come up to the next one and the next one's like fucking, it was the Marvels. Like I feel like I will at that point have to. If Blake is like, I don't want to see this. I feel like at that point, that's where I will have to be like, okay, Blake, I I I'm with you. Like we don't we don't have yeah. to see this for the pod, but if it comes out and then going into the next one it seems like everyone and their brother is They're seeing the marvels yeah. yeah then maybe we got to talk about it again but uh, i think sure. as as i said earlier this is kind of a this is a make or break for the marvels in my opinion for marvel in my opinion i think yeah, more people cool. viewed end game as a as a getting off point than maybe we realized at the time um is this the end of phase what is it four three not sure four we're well we're definitely four or five at this point but um, we're in five i, I think yeah Ant man started off five i'm pretty sure Ant man might have started either, five. Ant man either started off five or ended four i i'm with you yeah so yeah either way we're taking steps forward cool. i feel like we've been trying to say that about every marvel movie yeah I mean, hopefully this is the point. one that starts something else Actually, yeah, so I, I'm going to have to retract my statement because we still got Blade, and that's supposed Ooh, to have me a goth. Which, yeah, they did add me a goth. I don't know, though, man. Oof. That may be pretty bad, though. I'm not yeah. going to lie, fellas, but I'm at least I'm sold so far, right? So we'll see. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm good. That's, that's a relief to hear. Blake Hinson. It's got to be rated R, though, because if that comes out of PG-13, they're going to lose me. Ooh. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Anyways, let's wrap it up, folks. It's part of phase five, if any of you really care. Phase five. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Um, all right, yeah, as Nathaniel referenced, let's get on out of here. Um, Nathaniel, do we have a five-star review? We do not, but if you want to give us a five-star review, folks, you can give us one on Apple Podcasts, and I will read it out here on the podcast. It could be on Spotify as well, too, obviously. Uh, but it could be nice. It could be mean. It could be funny. Just don't be evil. And I will read it out here on the podcast for all of y'all to hear. And, uh, yeah, do so. Have a podcast. Thanks. Or just, you know, tell a friend. That's generally the best way for folks to listen about us, hear more about us. We'll talk to you later. Did you just sign us off? It's, it sounded like he did, fellas. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, if we want to wrap up the bit of sizzle with Nathaniel just just sounded us off and I'm with it. We'll talk we'll, to you later. Yeah. We'll keep the regular, we'll keep the regular flow rolling for us. Uh, I just, I just imagined in my head because we had to rush through. We, uh, Waz asked us to start the recording so we could play Star Wars and I think Waz is just standing right off frame and Nathaniel's getting like, he's got a gun pointed at Nathaniel. <laughs> so that's what's going on I mean, in my mind. You nailed it in one there that was it that was the end uh, <laughs> no, okay. that was actually good <laughs> all right uh but we will rush for for waz's sake uh we will rush out of this um if you 
you know, don't want to leave a five star review, you can then help out the show by sharing the podcast, a friend, a family member. Um, guys, give me a reference from the movie, please. Uh, a Nazi. Uh, a Nazi, or you know, uh, uh, don't with share with a Nazi. <laughs> don't really want many of those <laughs> listening to the podcast. So, so all uh, pub is not good pub. Is that what we're saying, fellas? Let's, that's yeah. like one of the we're gonna, pubs that is not we're gonna not come out uh, on record as anti-nazi <laughs> yes <laughs> smart decision smart decision yeah so, yeah maybe if you see um, a group tell, of women traveling in a tank or a dog yeah or a dog sure um and you can also support the show by following us on twitter at banter row on instagram at backer banter pod and our youtube we're just back row banter uh blake holder where can Yo. the people find you at, my man? Uh, Letterbox to Blake Holder. I'll be on there logging some things. Um, didn't put any thoughts on uh, on Sisu, but we'll see what's going on in terms of uh, I don't know what uh, I don't know what we got looking at for the for the next few weeks here, but we'll give it a look. Nonetheless, Letterbox to Blake Holder. You can find me on there. Um, I'll pass it over to we'll go Nathaniel. Uh, what up, folks? You can find me on Twitter and Letterboxd at NS Kingrick. You can find me on Instagram at NathanielG92. Sandpiper Tapes is my other podcast. Um, someday I might do more of it, but for right now, there's just the one season, which, uh, you know, go check it out. Who knows? We'll see. Tyler? Twitch. UltraBowl87. Instagram. Letterbox, Twitter. Tyler Dallas. Adam? Yeah, you can find me on Twitch at a or uh, Twitter. I'm about to say Twitter at h24 uh, on Letterbox at h and on Twitch. It's just twitch.tv slash h. That's going to do it here for our bit of sizzle episode on Sisu. Uh, join us next week for our review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Thank you all for listening, especially if you made it this far into the episode. You're my favorite type of listener. We'll be RB. That was the one that that really put the final nail on the Kaufman, Co- Coffin, Kaufman, the Kaufman. Is that another word you're working up? Uh, no, oh, Kaufman God, was the um, name of oh, my God. undergrad cafeteria. Ah, shortened to K Man a lot of the time. To me, Kaufman was. One of my middle sc- or middle school science olympiad like coaches. Science olympiad. Walk me through that process. It's like track for nerds. But it's just science. It's so really like cool. no uh, no literature in there. No social studies. No. Uh... No, it was, it was STEM basically. Um, Is this so you just had like, like a different, Midwest thing? You had thing? like different I've events. Never heard which of like, this. You had different events which were like different subjects of science so like i studied one year i studied meteorology another year i studied uh entomology another year i studied like oceans another year i studied glaciers um uh, like, stuff like just that glaciers <laughs> as a subject yeah, i learned feel a lot like about glaciers. i feel like in the terms of entomology are actually really interesting i've uh, they I've are. taken they up a fascination are. on that just through nature yeah science. i'm not i'm not professing anything against glaciers i just think in the in the realm of science and you know glaciers what, Nathaniel? Versus They're entomology. Dying, okay? Glaciers are dying. I, I don't disagree. I'm sad about the glaciers. Save the glaciers, Me I would say. Too. And the bees. Save the glaciers. Um, and the bees. Which is, you know, just a part of entomology, which is my point. <laughs> just, that's a much bigger <laughs> subject than just glaciers. Uh, yes, but they would just you would just get into more details of glaciers so like mm-hmm. i was in middle school and like this shit was at like a college level mm. like it, it was it would be like if i went to college because i came to i came to college i came to mizzou and my freshman year i needed a science gen ed and i took um intro to geology or like intro to geological sciences or something like that yeah yeah. And i was like 
oh, I learned this all in middle school in my fucking global whatever it was. In my, my glacier uh, class. Science would be a topic where I learned about glaciers and I learned about the oceans. And then uh, subsequently through those two things was just exposed to a lot of the introductory geological science stuff. Um, so, yeah, I had just learned uh, so much of it. Um, but anyway, like, in addition to that, there's, like, engineering events, too. So, like, one of the ones I did was called Boom a Lever. And um, we had to build, um, we would build wood bridges out of, like, very light wood, like balsa wood. And they were probably about, they were usually, like, seven inches long, three inches wide about. Um, and they weighed about five grams, which is, like, less than a pen. And they would hold up to 15 pounds. And, like, the, it was, like, a scoring ratio of, like, how light can you make your, your boom a lever or bridge? Um, and how heavy can, how much weight can it hold? So the most weight it could hold would be 15 pounds. Like, you basically, yeah. whoever, if, if like, everybody hold, held 15 pounds, whoever had the lightest bridge would then win. But, like, most people, you don't get to 15 pounds. You'd have to have a pretty heavy bridge to... See, for me, it's like, it's like I built the bridge. That was the goal. I did the thing. I don't give a shit how much more it weighs or less, like how much more or less stronger it is than everyone else. Like, you know, I like building shit, but once I built it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, but I'm not testing Sorry, it against someone else's. Oh, oh you're good, dude. Um, but yeah, but then how are you going to get your medals, Nathaniel? I don't, I don't need a medal. Why has it got to be a competition? This was, this Why can't was we the just... best part of Science Olympiad. We'd we have just... maybe like we'd have like five or six meets in a year, starting in like December, January. I feel like, and like is this just an excuse for nerds to get medals? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Okay, because then that, after, that you'd makes have, sense. after you'd have the event or uh, or the meet on the Monday after the for next school day after that weekend, because yeah. it happened on Saturday. You were allowed to part. wear the medal. Everyone wears their medals oh, to school. Oh, hell yeah. And notice I say medals plural. Like, if you had one, everyone had two to four events. If you had won more than one medal, you wore all of them. Sure. So, like, sometimes, one time I think I won four medals at a meet. And so we're all just clanking the whole day Damn. after a meet. And everyone, everyone fucking dreaded San Olympiad season because we'd come back and the whole, the hallways would just be clank and clank and clank. Oh, yeah, you're just... It was, Everyone hated us. You're going but we to loved the it. nurse three times a day from the strain on your neck, <laughs> from all the exactly all the all that hardware you were yeah you were weared weighed down with weared down with. Makes sense. Makes sense. But yeah, it was fun. I don't know if I forgot how I first mentioned. Oh yeah, glaciers. We were talking about glaciers. No, you just brought up science Olympiad out of nowhere. No, I said I learned something in science Olympiad. What were you, mm. what were you talking about? I don't know. I think if we play the tape back, you're going to find it's somewhat different. Here we go. Oh, Coffin. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, so Mrs. Coffin was my uh, meteorology like teacher. Coffin. And she taught something else. I forgot what else she taught. Um, but uh, yeah, <gasps> that, Mrs. Coffin, she was a G. And, and now in Missouri, Coffin is the uh, Royals Stadium. Ah, for Kansas City. Yeah, that's just true. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Coffee.